to this week's episode of Ask a Brit. This is episode 17. Can you believe we're already at 17? It's crazy. 18. It's 18. This is 18. This is mammoth. I think I said the very same thing last week about 17. Uh, oh, there's a bus behind me. You see, that's not real, so don't get panicked. Um, and of course, this, as you know, is the format in which I have you guys ask me any question you like. It can be anything anything so long as it's not dirty and then even then I'll allow them in um, but you do have to use the hashtag ask a Brit this hashtag right there um, in order for me to find your question and along those lines the first one today comes from Mr. Julian Williams and Julian asks do you watch anything on YouTube if so what do you watch I watch uh, Lost in the Pond mainly quick plug no need to plug it because you're watching um, and I don't watch my own videos that would be rather vain uh, but i watch some other things such as what culture that's one of my favorite channels they do kind of nostalgic views on television film uh, wrestling uh i was a big wrestling fan when i was young that's something you're not meant to know about me we occasionally tune into john townsend and sons or as they're now known townsends and they deal in uh, historical um uh, cooking uh, on their YouTube channel and also in a more wide sense they uh, they deal with uh, historical costumes they are actually really interesting based in Indiana check them out um, and I just watch lots of football videos our next question today comes from Susan Schultz and Susan asks uh, or rather says last week you said there is a sensibility to people here as in America what does that mean examples please uh, well, I think some of the sensibilities I'm referring to is the kind of thing where you're walking through a park, right, and somebody just says, good morning to you, um, without any prompting, uh, and certainly without any sort of acknowledgement of who you or they are. Um, it's just strangers saying hello to each other. British people don't even look each other in the eye uh, for fear of rejection, perhaps, um, in that circumstance. I don't know, I'm making crap up as I go along. Um, but it's, it's that sort of thing. There's this sort of overt friendliness that's ingrained into much of American society. Um, not all areas. Uh, you do find your shady characters here just as much as you would anywhere else. Um, but there's this overt friendliness and, and that comes across in many walks of life. I don't think this has fully answered the question. There's so much more I could do with that one, Susan, and I will look into that very subject, maybe for an entire video, who knows. Scootaloo, you're up next. Have you ever thought of going to Milwaukee and checking out the bars in the bar capital of the US? There are bars uh, after bars up there. Uh, well, we, we obviously went to Milwaukee earlier this year on a very cold day. We did go to one bar, it was more of a pub than a bar, it was a German pub, but I forget the name of it. What was it, can you remember? Lots of Lederhosen. Um, I don't remember the name of it now. It was good. We also went to a French restaurant. That was good too. We did. French restaurant. You probably know what it's called as well. Uh, it was called Laco... something Laco Cafe. It's, ah, I've forgotten the name of it. But you'll know it because you're, you're an, a Milwaukee aficionado. Uh, Tim Lewis. Growing up in quasi-rural America, I've always been involved in the outdoors and activities such as camping, fishing, hiking, and hunting. As a Brit, is it common to be introduced into any of these activities? And if not, what has been your exposure in these activities in America? Firstly, to answer the first part of the question, yes, I would say it is mostly common, although to speak to hunting, there was a hunting ban uh, a little over 10 years ago in the UK, so a little less common is that. Um, fishing is a big thing, and for me, hiking and camping were big things, big parts of my youth actually. I used to go camping a lot in the north um, where it's quite, quite rainy and stuff. And we talked about this last week that, you know, I prefer the idea of, um, you know, sleeping on the hard ground and, and the wife prefers a blow-up mattress when we go camping. So what's that all about? But we'll cover that again later. And hiking as well, just walking around. There's nothing better than hiking around um, you know, parts of northern England because there's a lot of hill areas. I, I strongly recommend actually if you're going to England and you're going to get out of London and head up um, north, go to the Lake District and hike there. You'll get lost but it is one of the greatest experiences you can either have or endure. It depends on how you look at it. And to speak to the idea of how I've been exposed, <laughs> not in that way, to these ideas in the United States um, I, I'm not a hunter, that's for sure, uh, nor a fish, fisher, fisherman, fisherman. Um, I'm a vegetarian, so I mean, I'm going to say that, aren't I? But um, hiking and camping have happened here as well, in Indiana. I've been camping with the wife and the family uh, to places um, 
of North and South, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe in the we went to Southern Indiana a couple times. Yeah, and uh, actually had a great time on both occasions. Um, and you know, you, you tend to do a little bit of hiking on those, but most of my hiking takes place around Chicago. Chicago hiking for the win. Is that even a thing? I mean, walking. It is now. Okay, next question. Let's move on. We've got one from Sue M. What are your favourite British ice creams? I love Magnum white chocolate ice cream bar. I don't blame you. It's bloody marvellous. But my favourite has to be the traditional 99 flake, which I hear is going out of fashion. It's no surprise because they're not 99p anymore. It doesn't matter. You know, inflation happens, you know, that's going to happen. But the, but the taste, that will never go out of date. And unfortunately, it's got, basically to, just to explain a 99 flake, it is a soft serve ice cream in a cone with a Cadbury flake in it. The, the, the second, I think I've said second, greatest chocolate bar of all time. So how is that going out of fashion? That is mental. Uh, next questions, three of them come from Ye Old Big Tree. Now, this is his question, bear in mind. I didn't have anything to do with this. What's the deal regarding Americans and being fat? Is there a lack of nutritionists out there? Well, no, okay, we have to be honest. If you look at statistics, the obesity rate in America is higher than most of the developed world. So I will answer it on that basis. And I think there are a few things that sort of lend themselves to it. Um, there is... Firstly, there's, there are certain ideas that come with food here. One of those ideas, as I pointed out just the other day, actually, are things like free refills. It's encouraged that people go back for more. Fast food restaurants do it as well because, you know, you don't just have the walk-in option, but you can now, and you have been able to for years and years and years, drive into them. Not into them. That would be criminal. You'd also break your car and the building, but you drive through them. No, again, the, the term drive-through doesn't make any sense. You drive around. Anyway, uh, <laughs> not to get all silly on this, um, the way I would put it is that there is an excess of excess uh, here that's been encouraged by, a, by the capitalist system, I suppose. Um, and in many ways, it's, it's a beautiful thing. I love partaking in it myself. In others, it's, uh, it can pile on the pounds, as we saw in my last video. Um, Balancia Galpi, 1968. Have you ever had Costa coffee? You know what's weird? I haven't had Costa coffee because I never drank coffee when I lived in England, but I have been to a Costa coffee to have hot chocolate. It was sublime and overpriced. Genial Harry Grout, uh, should the US have Greggs? Yes, it should, and if it did, I'd eat sausage rolls every day. I wouldn't, I'm a vegetarian, but I would have done if Greggs existed a You'd few- still have the cheese stuff. Years ago, cheese stuff, did they do that? They have like cheese pasties and stuff. I'd have cheese pasties. I would have that, Mr. Genial Harry Grout. And next question comes from Seven, T-A-H-4-Z. Uh, that is always a mouthful, but I appreciate it at this time of the morning. Which American TV shows are popular in the UK? Do you have any favourite US TV shows? Um, the, the two questions are very distinct there, and I noticed that, because there are some that are very popular. Friends, to this day, I think, from what I've heard, is still very popular there on reruns, and it was certainly back in the 90s. Huge thing. So a lot of your comedies are like that. Cheers was another one, um, you know, uh, Seinfeld. These comedies are not ones that always appeal to me as much. They're quite formulaic, they're laughter track driven. Um, I was more into the things like Curb Your Enthusiasm. There was sort of a naturalism to the, the, the storytelling and the comedy uh, and all of that. And it was kind of in line actually with a lot of British comedy. But if you want to talk outside of comedy, growing up I was into Quantum Leap. You know, that was a big thing of my generation. Uh, but we got all sorts of, uh, you know, of their time shows in the 90s, like The X-Files. Okay, next question comes from Relissican Idol. I think that might be name of the week, if I knew what it meant. But it sounds good. Uh, does the Greek system exist in universities in the UK, like fraternities and sororities? Uh, you know, I don't think it does, really. Uh, I know what you're talking about, how you sort of have Alpha, Beta, what is it? Kappa? Yes, Alpha, Beta, Kappa. You know, Delta, Phi, Zero. No. Last part made up. <laughs> um, but th that sort of thing, those Greek names that's attached to fraternity houses and sorority houses here. Just the idea of fraternity and sorority houses is, is less, less common in the UK as a whole. Um, so that was quite... In fact, you know, in the early days of being here, I went to a Thanksgiving party. It was actually about 10 days after I moved to the United States. 
at my sister-in-law's university and you know all of her sorority sisters were around and uh, it just felt so American and adorable of course um, but no we don't tend to have that we have different colleges and things like that that we we sort of are housed in at university that's about the extent of the demarcation that happens among students um, next question Sherry Losk how did you and your wife meet well <laughs> it all began one night in a police station I want, I want the story to be more fun than it is I don't even need to embellish that though because it was quite interesting we met on the stage uh, we were both actors um, back in the day uh, and we, we were cast in a show that was then later taken to the Edinburgh Fringe and we played enemies in this show and it stuck with us ever since. So I'm kidding, it's a joke, it's just for humour. Don't, I've already got a bus coming toward me, I don't need an angry wife. All right, and the next question comes from Ron Not Ryan, who asks, do you prefer having a president? Sorry if you've gotten this question before, I'm new to the channel. Well, welcome, welcome to the channel. And uh, I'm gonna answer this question to avoid sort of, you know, current affairs, um, in a general sense, in the a presidency versus a constitutional monarchy, or monarchy, as uh, Americans are want to say. Um, in one sense, I kind of like the term limit idea that comes with, you know, a presidency. It can be renewed every four years or eight years um, and all of that good stuff. But then again, if you want to talk about, firstly, the monarchy itself, you know, there are no term limits with a monarchy. Uh, it's, it's until death do us part in, in many respects or abdication in the case of uh, King Edward VIII. But, um, you know, now, of course, these days, it is very much a symbolic part of British life. And in fact, in, in my opinion, um, having moved out of the UK, it's a symbolic part of British life that is actually quite beneficial to British life because of the tourist dollars that it brings in. Think of the millions of people that just camp their arse outside of Buckingham Palace. That's quite a vision you didn't want at this time of day, on a Sunday no less. But um, there is that aspect. Now talk about the actual parliamentary system of, of governing in the UK. I mean, Honestly, it's quite a mess as well. There are issues with that. I, I couldn't say which one I prefer either way. In terms of voting, I've never voted on a presidential election, so I couldn't speak to that. We have more selection when it comes to... We can vote for Labour, we can vote for the Conservatives, we can vote for the Liberal Democrats, we can... There's a lot of parties, and when I say that, I know there are a lot of parties in the US, but... It, they actually gain traction. They gain traction. They actually get quite high up and sometimes come close to, you know, gain... In fact, the Liberal Democrats were in a coalition government just a few years ago with the Conservatives. So it's, it's a weird thing. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know which I prefer. Next question comes from JWB52Z, that's equally a mouthful and very similar to the other name, but have you thought about the fact that, uh, and this is in uh, response to the video I put out the other day in which I talked about giving up pop, giving up soda, um, and, and how I'm going to do this sort of thing every year for the rest of my life, um, and they ask, have you thought about the fact that you're eventually going to get to a point where you have nothing left to give up? It's a brilliant question because, yes, I have actually thought about that. What if I get to the age of 47 and I've given up and replaced everything and I'm now the perfect specimen of a human being? Um, it is likely. That is likely to happen. Um, the wife agrees. Um, but no, I think, I think the point is we'll all, I'll always be able to find something. You know, I think, you know, I'll get to 47 and I'll give up trying to pretend that I'm not balding or something like that. Or I will uh, suddenly discover that uh, genes are passe and I'll give them up. You know, anything could happen. Life is always changing. So I try to change with it to some extent. Um, but I listen to myself and I, I, I say, Lawrence, are you consuming too much of something? Yes, Lawrence, you are. I, I sound very, very odd right now. I'm sorry. But to end on a happy note, happy Labour Day weekend. That's Labour without a U for this uh, one occasion because it's an American holiday. And I hope you, if you do get tomorrow off, you enjoy it and go out in the sun. If not, I hope you exercise your Labour rights to work. Sorry, that's all I have on that. Um, until next Ask a Brit, uh, you know, keep the questions coming. Again, use the hashtag Ask a Brit. I just spilled coffee all over myself. Nice bye. Job. Yeah, oh, bye. See ya. Oh, that's quite a lot. Oh.